Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's review is the latest kids movie perfectly released for the Easter holidays. So this is Kia's Reviews and this is my review of Peter Rabbit 2 The Runaway. <laughs> oh no, Cottontail just discovered sugar. We had a good run. I'm gonna live forever! <laughs> Told you! After a surprisingly pleasant comedy in the first Peter Rabbit film, its sequel Peter Rabbit 2 The Runaway tackles all of the first movie's positives and delivers enough comedy that it'd satisfy its target audience which is children. However, the divide between both films is that the comedy from the previous movie was able to get both children and their parents laughing. This time around, not so much. My favourite character in Peter Rabbit 1 was Cottontail, who was voiced by Daisy Ridley, but the new voice actress for that character, Amy Horn, didn't capture the same comedy that Ridley was able to nail. Therefore, my favourite character really became a bit of a bore, and all the attempted shots at comedy didn't land very well. This is the type of movie that perfectly fits James Corden's ecstatic manner. Both movies have such a great cast, and James Corden, even though I don't generally like him in other movies, he's perfect for the titular role. Margot Robbie and Elizabeth Debicki's return as the other two of the three girl rabbits was fantastic, and they still captured the essence of their characters that was present in the first movie. For a kid's movie, this delivered jokes that only children would really laugh at, in turn forgetting that parents would be watching as well. The movie is well paced and entertaining enough for anybody, because it's never boring, it just feels like it's only aimed at kids. The story for Peter Rabbit 2 The Runaway is extremely different to that of Beatrix Potter's books, and to be honest, I didn't particularly enjoy this new adventure for the animals. It just felt flat and like everything was a bit childish. I can't help but compare this to the first movie and how surprisingly hilarious the first one was. The CGI animation was still quite great and felt like the only thing that held up in this sequel. I couldn't help but feel as if this was rushed and wasn't thought out very well. Unfortunately, aside from the voice cast that returned from Peter Rabbit 1, there isn't much to praise about Peter Rabbit 2. Join them, frolic. Yeah, I can frolic. This is fun. I'm speeding up a little. I'm speeding up quite a bit. Oh, stop. Oh, oh. Oh. And that's why adults shouldn't do kids stuff. Peter Rabbit 2 The Runaway could have stuck to Beatrix Potter's acclaimed books, but once the story starts to kick in, it only gets more disappointing from there. It's not a bad movie, but I wouldn't say it's good either. The voice cast is spectacular, as is the CGI animation, but aside from that, Peter Rabbit 2 didn't deliver as much as its predecessor, so I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching! Are you going to see Peter Rabbit 2 The Runaway? Let me know below. If you like what you're seeing here and you want to see even more, check out my channel and be sure to have a look at my previous reviews of Nobody and Zack Snyder's Justice League. As always, be sure to follow and subscribe to my YouTube channel. This has been Kia's Reviews, signing off for now.